Hey friends, so I know that the Notability 11 update has been out for a little bit now and I'm a little bit behind in getting into exploring all the new features. But in this video, I just want to show you everything that is new in the update and kind of show you what features I use and I think that are actually really great improvements to Notability now. And I'm not going to really talk about any of the changes they made in terms of the pricing and the subscription model that they're now going for because I've already covered that in a separate video. But I will be addressing some of the features that you can't pay for in individually anymore that have just been kind of grouped into the subscription model and I'll explain that further as we look at the update. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and see all the great features that Notability has now introduced in Notability 11. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up Notability here and I just want to show you, so this is not, you know, relevant to Notability 11, but in iPadOS, 15, you can see here that I can have multiple windows of Notability open at a time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up a new window of Notability so I don't have to lose any of these other tabs that I have open. I don't have to lose the work that I have saved on, them, saved on them or the progress. So let's pull up a new window to go over what we want to see. So the first thing that you're going to notice here is that we can actually now create nested dividers. So right off the bat, I want to say that Notability's file management system is still really terrible, in my opinion, compared to competitors like GoodNotes, which has a more traditional file management system. So Notability, you see, has these dividers here and then these subjects as well. So you can create different dividers and then you can have different subjects and within the subjects you can have different notes. So that's how you structure your notebook. So this is kind of a very limiting sort of file management where you don't have folders like you do in GoodNotes. But what they introduce now is that you can have something called nested dividers. So instead of just having subjects within the dividers, you can have other dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and create a nested divider here. So I'm just going to click on this plus button at the top left and add divider. And you can see here now it's created a divider within this divider and we can go ahead and call this divider uh, new divider within that divider. So first what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to move it up here and within that divider I can populate it with new subjects. So I'm just going to click on it and then click on add subject and we'll just call this new subject. So I can start here with a main divider, like the fall semester that I have here. Then within that divider, I can have a new divider that could be my subject name. So like that could be my course, like nutrition and health could have been this divider's name. And then within that nest divider, I could have created different types of subjects within there. So like if it was multiple weeks or different blocks, I could be like block one, block two, block three. So this would have been helpful like when I first started med school, but now that I already have an organization a certain way, it's not relevant. I guess it won't be relevant for me until next semester. But it's nice that you can do this, but I still wish that Notability would abandon this divider subject organization system and just go with a more traditional file management system, which I think is just a lot easier, more intuitive, and just a better way to organize files in general. But regardless, this is still a really big improvement as to how it was before, so you can't complain too much about that. And the next feature then, kind of along the same lines, is that you can have now subjects that have the same name. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this name. So this is our course. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that into this new subject name, and it'll let me do that now, before you weren't able to. But I think it's because you can have nested dividers. They realize that if you want the same subject name, uh, that should be allowed. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And yeah, see, it doesn't give me any issues. So that's cool, too, that they improved that feature. All right, so moving right along. So something that other note-taking apps have had for a while, but Notability has kind of been lacking on until now, has been the availability of templates. But now, if we click here and you hold it, I'm going to create a new document based on a template. So I just held this button and I'm gonna, and this pop-up came up, so I'm gonna click on template. And here you can see that you have a lot more options for what kind of templates you want. It's still not a ton of options like other apps have, but it is more than before. So we still have the grid and we still have the dot and things like that, and you can change the different spacing, but there's a lot more flexibility in the spacing now. Before, I think we only had like three options, but now you have like this whole continuum of options and for the ruling, for the grid, for the dot paper, whatever. And you can also change the color here, which is nice. There are more colors, there are more different types of papers. 
You can cho choose any of these colors. You can create your own custom color that you want your page to be. So that's more customizability, the better, I think. So that's also very cool. And I think we had Cornell notes before, but now you also have like these manuscript engineering grid. I don't even want to try to pronounce these two templates here, but you have those as well and hexagonal grid. And then a recipe template, which is really cool. A music, uh, a music staff, which is also really cool. I think that's really useful for a lot of people. And then planners for sports, which is neat. Daily planner, meal planner, things like that. So all these features are really neat. But what I want to point out actually the most is that you can change the size now, which is cool. So you can have letter or you can change it to an A7, an A4, legal, tabloid. So this is really neat because one of my biggest complaints was that Notability doesn't let you change the size of your note, but now you can. And what else you can do here is you can change it to landscape here. You can see that. So you can change it from portrait up here or to landscape. So this is also something that I really wanted Notability to do and they finally did it, which is great. The only issue here, well, it's not a huge deal, but it's still something, a feature that I would like them to introduce is the ability to have different templates within the same note. So let me just go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So if I create a new note here, so I have ruled paper here, but if I want to change the template, so if I click on here, templates, and let's say I want a new page with a manuscript template in between, it changes all the templates to manuscript. And I haven't found a way to create a new page with a totally different template within the same note. So I don't know if I'm missing something, but I looked and I couldn't find a way to do it. Like other apps can't, like in GoodNotes you can. So like even if I click on this page and I go to change template, it doesn't let me change just that page. It changes all of them. Yeah, see, they all changed. So that's unfortunate. So you can't introduce like a landscape page in the middle of your document like you can in GoodNotes. People probably don't do that very often, but it has been a case where I wanted different templates like dots on one page and then like lines and then just nothing, just plain paper on another page. And I wasn't able to do that. So I just had to make everything plain, which again, is not a huge deal, but the option to have individual templates on each page would be really cool. So I think that they should try to introduce that in the next update. Okay, so now that we're in the note, the next thing that they changed is the page manager. So it's actually really cool here. So if you click on this page manager and then you click on this expand button on the bottom right to go full screen. So now you can actually see your pages in a more, you can see more pages horizontally instead of just all the way vertically, which is a lot easier to manage pages. And on top of that, what you can do is you can um, copy and move pages from one note to another. So let me show you what that what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and populate this note with some text. Okay, and then let's say that I want to copy this page here to another note that I'm gonna create. So you can uh, right click it if you have a trackpad or hold it if you're just using your finger. Um, and I'm gonna copy and then let's create another note within here. And what I can go ahead and do is I can go to the page manager and I can go ahead and right click here and I can paste. And see now it inserted this page that I copied from the previous note that has the text. This is some text that I typed here right from that note. So this is a lot easier now to move pages around within your notebooks, which is something that it was a little bit harder to do before. Uh, before you would have to actually like use the lasso tool here to basically select everything and then copy it and then paste it onto your new page in your other notebook. But actually just copying and pasting the page itself, I think is a lot easier to do. And then there's one more feature, and I don't remember if this is new or not. I don't think it's new, but you can also clear the page, which is not something I'd realized that you could do. But this is really nice if you had a lot of like annotations on a page, like on a PowerPoint figure, and you wanted to get rid of all the annotations you had written, you can just clear it and everything that you type or, or drew will go away. So you just have what the actual page is itself, which is great. So like if you're annotated on PowerPoints, at least for me, that's where I would use it the most. And um, it's been actually a really useful feature to have. So there's just one last thing I wanna address now in Notability 11, and that's the ability to have handwriting features and math conversion features. So basically now what's happening in this new update is that if you had purchased any of those features prior to Notability 11, you get to keep them. But now with Notability 11, you don't get the option to just purchase like handwriting recognition or math conversion. You have to just get the subscription, which has all of them. So if you 
didn't have those features before Notability 11, you can't get them unless you pay for the subscription. But if you did buy those features like I did, or actually I didn't have to buy handwriting recognition, it used to be free. That's how long I've had Notability for. But in that case, uh, they made it so that I don't have to pay extra for the subscription in order to retain those features. So I don't have to pay anything at all to keep my handwriting recognition feature. And I never purchased math conversion, so I don't have access to that. If I wanted math conversion, I would have to pay the subscription. But yeah, that's all I have here in terms of the uh, new Notability update. You know, these are some really good updates that they're making, and I'm really happy that they are, you know, always trying to add new things. There's still a lot of work that I think Notability has to do in order to make it a more compelling note-taking app. And, you know, making it a subscription-based model, in my opinion, isn't really helping uh, their case, I don't think, in terms of an app that I would recommend. But I still do love Notability as an app, but I am, like I said in my previous video, trying to move on and see if I can explore more with good notes because that file management is just so good on good notes. And the fact that it's... It has a little bit more customizability is, is really appealing. I still use Notability on a daily basis and I love it. So that's all I have to say. Let me know your thoughts on Notability and yeah, that's it. I'm done.